Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the SoftKey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2 CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. It's week 15 and here's what our diggers have lined up for today. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply head on over to the Patreon page linked in the video description. Now without further ado, let's begin. First up, Pixel Diva dug up the blatantly named Win Games backslash Puzzle One backslash Tetris. Okay, let's see here. Puzzle One and Tetris. So clearly this is going to be some kind of Tetris clone. We don't even have any readmes or anything from the looks of it. So let's see here. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be really basic. Uh, it doesn't even have help in <laughs> Oh wait, there it is. Help. Directions. Left, right, down, middle key? There is no middle key on the keyboard, I'm pretty sure of it. Unless they mean like the five key? Okay, so they're assuming numeric keypad here. So this looks to be an extremely basic Tetris clone. Like, I mean, <laughs> what else am I gonna say about it, really? I mean, I don't know if I should count this as a failed dig or not, because this is a legitimate Tetris game right here, but... And it just uses the standard system beeps for when you make lines, apparently. So this isn't that bad a speed for level zero. Um, let's see how much faster it can go. Level nine. Whoa. We're zooming now. And it's got instant drop instead of, um... Okay, so it does actually have some... There is some level of intelligent design here because it doesn't immediately end the f the piece if it's not um because you see when it hits when it gets put down it's hard to it's hard to comment on Tetris when it's going that fast. There's actually time to continue moving the piece after it's landed, which is not something you see in a lot of um, clones of Tetris because um, quite frankly, not a lot of programmers making Tetris is were really looking to, like, make something they'd sell or anything. Usually Tetris ends up being, like, someone's first game project, which I usually discourage people from doing Tetris as their first game simply because it's a lot more um, complex than they might realize. Apparently there's a Hall of Fame here, too. Your cool man... Your cool name. Well, put in my screen name. Your wise man sane. Um... This is a clone. Why? What? <laughs> so this, these are the default um, high scores, apparently. Okay. This is probably the most entertaining part of the entire program, given that it's just a Tetris clone. So who made this? <laughs> Dave Edson, 1989 Bogus Software. That's actually interesting. The fact that it's 89 here suggests it might not have originally been made for Windows 3.1. But there's virtually no information to go on here. It's not like there's like... There isn't even licensing files or anything, so... I don't know. Basically, it's a really basic Tetris clone. And that's all I gotta say. Next up we have a team dig. Both Matthew Belshin and Anton Panetta dug up DOS games backslash TDOS backslash AGG is 10 or something like that. Well, whatever this is, I'm going to assume that it's probably a version 1.0 of something, just from the 10 in the thing there. The EXE name is Aggress, so maybe the game's called Aggression or... I don't know. Let's find out. Well, I called that one. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a game called Aggression, but apparently there is. So, one player, sound on, level one. Let's do it. I have no idea what I'm doing. Gonna guess I'm probably the green, maybe? Or maybe I'm the red. Yep, I'm definitely the red. For a second, I thought it was gonna be like... Like those games where you can either click one to the side and it will copy it, or if you click two away, it'll jump it. 
but I just moved by one, and it counted as a jump. So, this is probably, and I can't move two spaces, so this is probably something completely different. I mean, all I'm doing is moving these little pieces. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Like, I mean, the opponent pieces are grouping up on the side there. Well, let me just confirm whether or not... Okay, interesting. And it's a different layout each time. Okay, it actually ha does have an info screen here. The goal in aggression is to get all of your pieces to the side of the board opposite from where they start. For player one, the win is top line. For player two, green is bottom. If you place two of your pieces so that one is the, to the left of an opponent's piece and the other is to the right of the same opponent's piece, your opponent's piece will be sent to a random location on your opponent's back line. So that's kind of like the equivalent of taking a piece, I guess? Hmm. But this is pretty slow paced considering how many pieces you have to deal with. Like, I mean, at the same time, you can kind of set up, like, traps in a way. Maybe? Yeah, that worked. Now, the, th the way it looks like it works, though, is that you have to be the one who actually moves the piece in order to make the capture. Otherwise, it doesn't count. As you hear, the tricky part is that even if he moves here, because the two pieces are already like that, it won't actually take it. So... There's kind of some trickiness to this, but I think I'm getting the hang of it. This is actually kind of boring. <laughs> There's not really a lot of strategy in this, and like, I mean... I could move my pieces over to the side to catch him there, but it's... It just makes more sense to rush the f to rush this. He's just going to do the same thing. The controls are kind of annoying because you have to click each individual piece. But like, I mean, I can't think of any other way you'd be able to do that, though, so... So yeah, that's kind of, um... I mean, it looks like a strategy game at first glance, but... It kind of really isn't. Like, I mean, this doesn't seem very fair, having the green starting so close to the bottom like that. I mean, I'm guessing there's different patterns that it will, can start everyone on. Oh, well, that's an interesting one, but kinda dumb when you consider... <laughs> like, I mean, look at this. Yeah, even the AI is doing the exact same thing, so that's kind of a dumb way to start it. <laughs> This is probably the best... well, maybe not. I mean, again, this game really isn't a strategy game. It's just a game of... It's just a game of making smart moves. Because you can't really strategize all that well. And, I mean, here's the other thing, too, is that if this were uh, two people playing against each other, they could set themselves up in such a way that it's pretty much not possible for anyone to get anywhere. Because, like, I mean, both players could set up little barricades on their sides to make sure that opposing pieces can't get through, and then it's just an infinite stalemate. So, it's an interesting idea for a game, I'll give it that. And, I mean, that's, that's one of the things that ultimately happens when making games, is sometimes you'll have a great idea for a game, and you'll go to make it, but you'll be so far in by the time you realize that it doesn't actually play that well, that it's like, you have two options. You could either stop making the game and end up with a whole bunch of wasted time, or finish the game and end up with a subpar game and just release it anyways. So, I mean, that happens with the that happens with AAA titles. It happens with portable titles. It happens with indie titles. It's like sometimes you just got to cut your losses, and this is a game that kind of feels like that. It's a game that good idea in theory doesn't play very well when you actually get down to it. But, hey, at least it works. Our last game for today, dug up by Christopher Wagel, is anonymously named Win Games backslash New Win backslash Try Me. 
This might be interesting, because I don't have a clue what this is going to be. It's simply called Try Me. And the file is apparently BB2. There is an I, there's a dis, dis file. There's also a readme. Brick Breaker 2 in a folder called Try Me for whatever reason. That's sound effects. Unlike original brick breaking game, <laughs> which we have no idea what that is, because we have not played Brick Breaker 1. How to play Brick Breaker Professional Turbo Version HD Remix. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, okay, so select a level from the menu, choose new game, use mouse. Double click the left button to pause the game. It's kind of dumb. The goal of the game is to break as many bricks as possible. I would never have guessed. So let's actually play this thing. Uh. That was discouraging, because that went by so quick. Am I going to have to mess with the... Whoa. Is this, like, the speed of the game? That's a weird way of referring to the speed of the game, by doing it in cars. This is a, the strangest options menu in the history of options menus. Okay, so this speed's going fine. Actually, it's going maybe a little too fine. <laughs> We got guitar twangs for hitting the paddle. Well, that's some stellar physics right there. It went straight through the corner of that block. This is pretty... What? I think the physics just had a meltdown for a second there. Wow, this is going slow. Whoa, what the... The blocks just moved. The blocks just moved. I'm not crazy. The blocks just... Why can't I... What? I can't move my paddle further than that far to the side. What? And now it won't go farther that way? Okay, to call the paddle physics, to call the... It's, it'll even go past the board. And the bricks are moving again? What is wrong with this game? This is bizarre. Because, like, I mean, right now I can't move the paddle any further left. But... And now it won't go any further left than that. And now than that. It's like the left boundary changes every time you bring the paddle over there. And the right boundary is just there. It never moves. So yeah, I'm probably going to lose the ball here because I can't move the paddle over there. The ball's moving so slowly. And you know, the ball physics aren't even that good. Because the way it should work in a breakout game is where you hit the ball on the paddle should determine uh is that seriously it and you choose a uh, hilariously bad well it's kind of charming for 16 color windows stuff so you choose the guy you look like i don't know let's choose the businessman guy <laughs> to go into the top 10 It's repeating a clapping sound effect, and and that's it. One level. <laughs> I'm guessing this like. Let me let me figure out more of these options here. Okay, so the location option is what affects the speed of the game, not the car that you choose. <laughs> Look at that. The physics just. What is wrong with the physics here? Wait, now the ball is blue. I don't quite get what's going on here. The ball also seems to be behaving slightly differently. So the choice in the options menu right here for that seems like a car. Oh. This is weird. So now it's a completely different board with a completely different ball. My paddle just got super small. This is one of the most bizarre breakout clones I have ever played. And if I could just move the freaking paddle over to the... Uh, this is really bizarre. Like, I mean, it doesn't help that I can't move the paddle all the way over. Actually, I want to try something here. Because I wonder if it's related. Yeah, that's the... <laughs> okay. 
So the problem with the paddle is the fact that it's determining the paddle position based on the mouse coordinates. The paddle position seems to be based on the window, like the actual mouse coordinates for the entire desktop, as opposed to the relative coordinates in the window, which is why moving the window up into the top corner allows me to move the paddle over here. To demonstrate this in action, I'm going to move the window over here. And now, I should be completely incapable. Yep, that's as far to the side as I can move it now. That's some good grade A programming. Just like the physics of this ball, jeez. That ball's never moving anywhere else now, is it? So that's Brick Breaker. <laughs> The game is pretty buggy. Oh wait, there it goes. <laughs> it's the blocks move. A game is pretty buggy, very basic, and just has, I mean, it has some charm to it, but it really needed some more testing and everything to make it as good as it could be. Let's